There are a lot of theories going around about Jordan Peele's brand new horror film called us. And as we know from his first film, Get Out, that Jordan Peele likes to squeeze in a lot of social commentary. So in this video, we're gonna break it down and discuss what the hidden meaning behind us actually is. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel's all about mental health. What I like to do is pull different topics from like movies, pop culture in general, to try to teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about us. There will be some spoilers, but not major ones. Just if you've heard of the movie Us, you're probably gonna know about the things I'm gonna talk about. But another quick disclaimer, I am not a licensed therapist or psychologist or psychiatrist or anything like that. I will be citing a doctor in this uh, video though, all right? So yeah, anyways, quick rundown of us, okay? So a family, the Wilsons, you know, um, with the mother being Adelaide and then the father being Wade, they go on vacation. It is where Adelaide experienced a traumatic experience where she saw uh, an, uh, a doppelganger of herself. And now they're back, right? And the doppelganger Wilson family comes over and terrorizes the Wilsons, okay? So watching a bunch of interviews with Jordan Peele and everything, like uh, he talks about where the idea of this came from and he said this. It's also a movie that I, I think is best when it's personalized. It's a movie about the duality of mankind um, and it's a du a, a movie about our fear of invasion, of the other, of um, the outsider, and the revelation that our, we are our own worst enemy. So yeah, spoiler, the tethered, um, they are coming to kill everybody and take over the United States. There it is, that's a spoiler. But anyways, let's jump into this. So this actually reminded me of an article from uh, Dr. Mark Golston. So Dr. Mark Golston, he is super, super incredible guy. He is one of the best there is with, you know, treating people who struggle with uh, suicidal thoughts. Um, he also has trained the FBI when it comes to hostage negotiation and like we were saying with Jordan Peele, he brings in a lot of social commentary. And these last, I don't even know how many years, we've been living in a very scary time, right? With mass shootings always happening, the most recent one being in New Zealand. So the first topic I wanna to talk about is when Jordan Peterson said, part of uh, you know the, the, the overall theme of us is this fear of the other, okay? And Dr. Mark Golston actually wrote an article after one of the mass shootings where he tries to hack the mind of why people do this, all right? And it's interesting if you tie this in to the tethered and what their overall goal is. So he, he states that typically what occurs with such individuals is the following process and a descent into hatred and murder. One, perceived injustice mixed with humiliation, whether it's real or imagined, these individuals often perceive the world saying to them, you're stupid, you're ugly, you're weak, you're nobody, etc." So think about this in the context of the tethered, right? They are, you know, these clones of, you know, the people in the United States, but they are forced to live underground, they have to eat raw rabbits, you know, they don't even really have a soul, these types of things. So they are oppressed down there. Number two that Mark Goldstein talks about is isolation. As these individuals pull away, they become greater prey to their imaginations and the thoughts above. So on the social context, like we see this happening with a lot of, you know, the mass shooters and things like that. But for the others, they were isolated down there with their own ideas, their own beliefs and everything like that, all right? But anyways, <clears throat> Like you think about it, um, what we come to find out with the twist ending is Adelaide is actually red, right? Like they, they swapped when they were kids. So 
she's able to talk about this belief with all of them, that the people up there are bad and terrible and we need to take over and all of that. And something I was actually discussing with Dr. Mark Golson after he sent me this article that he wrote was that's one of the downsides to the internet as I see it. Um, this is just my opinion. Like the internet is an amazing thing. I love how we can be connected with people all over the world, develop friendships, bonds, and all that kind of stuff. But one of the downsides is you can create your own echo chamber, right? You can find a community of people who has those same beliefs and even, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the perceived injustice. You can find a group of those people and just talk to them and build up these ideas, all right? So the next thing that he talks about is agitation. These individuals then proceed to have observation bias. They look out at the world as if it is saying all these things to him. And then confirmation bias. This further justifies the vengeful fa fantasies and beginning of plans or even acting on prior such events that were not stopped or taken as a full risk, all right? So these people, when when they get into this idea, that when they get into this echo chamber even, they all they see is that. All they see is they're being treated unfairly, okay? Next, the last straw. Often we will discover some events, sometimes even small or trivial from our point of view, but given the foundation created by the above three steps, it essentially causes a moral lobotomy. At, the, at that point, these individuals act by reflex and with an eye for an eye, revenge for perceived injustice, and to the degree that they have felt that the world has put them down and pushed them away, they will find a way to get in and get even. All right, so this is actually interesting, something um, you know I've talked about with some people who saw us. Like, the timing of this was interesting. Like, it just happened to be when Adelaide and her family came back this particular summer and went to Santa Cruz Beach and all of that. But in the real world, like, there's something that causes them to finally snap, that, that last straw where they act on these things, okay? But Dr. Mark Goldstein brings up this, uh, this interesting point where he talks about a moral lobotomy, okay? So when, when you are perceiving this injustice, when you're in this echo chamber, when you start to get agitated, like you get this moral lob lobotomy, right? Like right and wrong goes out the window and it is time for revenge, okay? Lastly, he discusses lowered impulse control. Quite simply, mental health is the ability to experience strong emotions without getting emotional, experience anger without becoming angry. In psychological terms, it is referred to being able to contain emotions, i.e. feel them without acting on them. The greater the degree of mental illness, the, that lesser the ability to resist acting on impulses be they intrusive towards others or towards oneself. Lowered inhibitions can also be caused by drug and alcohol use, although most mass shooters are not usually high on drugs because they are instead high on revenge. So when you look at the tethered and what they're going through, it's easy to you know put all this into perspective. Lowered impulse control, the moral lobotomy, running around up on top, doing this mass murdering, all right, of, you know, the, the original families and all that, okay? So I just found it really fascinating, you know, with Jordan Peele talking about this fear of the other and this, this kind of coming into fruition, right? And you have the fear of the other, you know, like, you know, the families above being afraid of the tethered, but they kind of had a good reason because the tethered just came straight up and started killing people. But the tethered had the fear of the other, which were the people above, the originals, right? So aside from that, I just wanna talk about some of my own personal experience because something that Jordan Peele also talks about is we are our own worst enemies, okay? And that's something that's really interesting to me because, and another thing that's interesting is just art in general and just, we see it through our own lens, our own life experience, what we see, how we interpret it and all that. But I saw this as like self-sabotaging behavior, not dealing with certain parts of yourself and it becoming this thing that ultimately destroys you, right? Like a lot of us, from my experience, you know, my personal experience, as well as working in a treatment center, a lot of us don't want to deal with things from our past, right? We don't want to, and it bottles up and it bottles up. And eventually, like especially what I found out, like being the son of an alcoholic mother, I started to have a lot of self-sabotaging behaviors, all right? This could be in uh, romantic relationships. This can be in professional relationships. I would self-sabotage at work. There's also an excellent book called Adult Children of Alcoholics. If any of you watching this 
are a child of an addict or an alcoholic, whether or not they're clean now, I recommend this book. I'm gonna link that book as well as Mark Goldstein's um, article down below. But yeah, when I read that book, I started to realize how many ways I self-sabotage, and there's a variety of different reasons that we do so, right? But the way I was kind of seeing it and looking at this self-sabotage, when you see the tethered come up and you know they start murdering the original families, like we see that we destroy ourselves. And this is more of a, you know, our own mental health psycho, uh, psychological type deal that we have to deal with. You know, if we don't feel what we need to feel, it will destroy us. This is why, you know, I recommend therapy to everybody. If you're watching this, like, I know it's kind of taboo to say, oh, you need therapy, but I'm just letting you know from my experience and like dealing with like people in my life as well as the treatment center I was working at, everybody could benefit from therapy. Everybody, we all have something from our past that even if we think we've worked through, a lot of us haven't. So if you are not in therapy and you would like to, like make sure you like talk to your doctor, talk to your insurance company. There's also an affiliate link down below for BetterHelp Online Therapy if you wanna use that option. But if you have an insurance provider, call them up, see what therapists are recommended. And this is especially true, like in my last video, I talked about trauma. So check that out because there's so many things, especially from our childhood that are affecting us today and we don't even realize it. And we need to work with a licensed professional to kind of figure out what the steps are that we need to take to live like a better, more fulfilling life. Like, I'll tell you this, when I started working through my past, like I was at a place where I thought my life was like, just an eight out of a 10. But like when I really dug in deep and got down to the roots of some other things that were going on, like I realized that my life was never at an eight. It was really at like a six. And now I'm like at a nine. Like I am able to deal with situations that come my way in a, a, a far better way than I would have six or seven years ago. You know what I mean? But anyways, for all of you who have seen the movie Us from Jordan Peele, I would love to know your interpretations or if it's on any of the topics that we just discussed, like when it comes to the fear of the other and all those things, let me know down in the comments below, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You're all amazing. And if you would like to be a patron and get involved in our monthly Q&A and exclusive content and all that, you can click or tap right there. All right, thanks again so much for watching. I'll see you next time.